Um, Mark chapter 4, crossing over. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to look at some, some things in it. Now, you got to understand, Jesus, in chapter 3, he was, I believe, in the synagogue, and he was teaching. And he went from the synagogue to the uh, seashore, and then from the seashore went to the top of a mountain. And now we're back, and he's at a seashore again, same seashore. Okay, Sea of Galilee. Okay. This time he is out on a ship, and he's teaching because of the people, the multitude. All right? And so he's done this all day long. But look, in verse 34, it says, But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Verse 35, And the same day when the even was come. What is the even? The evening. And the same day when the evening was come. You see that? He's, he's, he's been teaching. He's been working. He's, 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 he's been doing the Father's will all day long. And it says, And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, what does he say? Let us pass over Onto the other side. Now, don't forget that. That's important. Let us pass over onto the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. So Jesus was already in the ship. And Jesus turns around and he says, let us pass over onto the other side. And so they began to sail. Verse 37, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. So we see Jesus, and he's on this, this ship, and he's telling his disciples, Brother Lanny, let's go on over to the other side. And so they began sailing, and the Bible says that there is a great wind that comes upon them. And I want you to look um, in one of the verses. It is verse 37. It says, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into, not onto, but beat into the ship, so that it was now what? Full. The ship was now full. What was it full of? Water. Why is that a bad thing? <laughs> Why is it a bad thing that a ship be full of water? Because it's going to sink, right? So we see that um, the ship that they were in was being beaten upon by um, the storm of the wind and the water was gushing into the ship and I can see them trying to bail out the water and all of this and, and man, they are, well, put yourself in their shoes. Would you be fearful at that moment? Would you think, oh my goodness, the ship is getting ready to go down? Absolutely. And so they were fearful, but look at this now. It says, it says, um, in verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? So by them waking him up and saying, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you think that they were fearful of their lives at that moment? I mean, you're not going to wake up somebody unless you need somebody, right? And not intentionally anyway, right? So here he is. Jesus is asleep on the hinder part of the ship. But notice this. Jesus told them, let us go over onto the other side. Did Jesus know that there was going to be a storm come up? Absolutely he did. Absolutely he did. Now, Brother Dave, do you, ever, do you have a recliner at home? I imagine you would. You still? Yeah, okay, yeah. Your best friend. Yeah. So do you ever just, you're sitting in your favorite chair, whether it be recliner, couch, whatever. You're sitting there and all of a sudden, you take a nap. Anybody ever do that? Amen. Now, most of the time when you take a nap, you just, 
And sometimes you might even get a cramp in your neck. Now, and when it's bedtime and you go to bed, what do you lay your head on? A pillow. Why do you lay your head on a pillow? Because you're going to be there for a while, right? And you want to be comfortable, right? And so when you go to bed, you go to bed with purpose, right? But when you take a nap, sometimes it's by accident. You don't mean to. It's just, you know, for whatever reason, you're asleep, right? So notice this. Jesus says, let us go on to the other side. Jesus had taught all day long. He had been in Jerusalem. He had walked to the seashore. He went to the top of a mountain. He came back down to the seashore. He had done God's will all day long, and he was wore out. Now, there is a study that says that when a preacher preaches under the anointing of God for 20 to 30 minutes, he has done the equivalency of a hard day's work of a person that labors uh, on the job. And so here is Jesus, he is wore out, and he says, let us go over onto the other side. Now, the book of Revelation that, uh, says that Jesus is what? Does, does anybody know what the book of Revelation says that Jesus is? The Word of God. That Jesus Christ is the Word of God. So follow this. So the Word of God has been spoken. And he said, let us go over onto the other side. But they find Jesus when they seemingly need him the most asleep on the hinder part of the ship. Do you think he was taking a nap? He was asleep. The point being, he purposefully went to sleep. How do I know that? How do we know that he purposefully meant to go to sleep? Because he had a pillow. Because he had a pillow. When you take a nap, you don't usually get a pillow unless you plan on being there for a long nap. When you plan on going to sleep and resting your body, you most of the time will go to a bedroom and you will lay down, you'll fluff up your pillow, you'll get it just right, you'll lay down and you'll move your head until you get it right in the certain place that you want it where you can rest and then boom, Katie barred the door. And then the women folk probably can't sleep because <laughs> snoring, right? But you are asleep with purpose. You mean to go to bed. You mean to lay your head on the pillow at night. You mean to be there for a while. Jesus meant to go to sleep on the ship. He knew the trouble was coming. But he still meant to go to sleep. Why in the world did he mean to go to sleep while he was on a ship and he knew the storm was coming and he knew even that they were going to wake him up? Because he spoke the word of God that said, let us go over onto the other side. Now, let me ask you a question. Where is the safest place that we can be here on earth? Tornado comes. The safest place we can be in a basement? When an earthquake happens, safest place we can be is outside. What about when the storms of life comes against you? Where's the safest place to be? No matter what the storm is, whether it be physical or whether it be spiritual or whether it, whatever the battle is. Whatever the storm is, where is the safest place to be? I would tell you where the safest place. I don't care if it's COVID. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if it's things going on in the world. I don't care if they're about to be a World War III. I don't care if they're about to nuke the whole world. The safest place that you and I can be is in the will of God. That's the safest place. 
And because Jesus said, let us go over onto the other side, and his disciples uh, obeyed him, and they were going over to the other side, where were the disciples? When they were in the boat, the ship, glory to God, that the water was coming in on, the wind was blowing against the ship, and, and it seemed like that they were about to sink, and, and they wake him up because he was purposefully went to sleep. He had peace, glory to God. Where was the safest place that they could be? Right in the ship. Because that's where they found the will of God. What about when you and I go through things? Where's the safest place? Where's the safest place that Brother Harley can be? In the will of God. Brother Rob prayed it. Most importantly, God, your will be done. My 80-year-old deacon, who I love and have come to love greatly and respect, and he's full of wisdom, he messaged me while he was in the hospital, and he's got blood clots in his lungs and his legs. He said, Brother Randy, he said, please tell people don't pray for my recovery. Don't pray that God would heal me. Simply pray God's will be done. Amen. And see, the safest place that we can be is in the center of God's will. Let's go on and look just a few more minutes. Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Peace was moving. It hadn't settled yet. Now, I know he was speaking to the wind. He's speaking to the storm. He's speaking to the water. But see, there wasn't peace in the storm. There wasn't peace in the wind. And there wasn't peace in the water. But yet, that's where that the men, the disciples, looked for peace. Don't look for peace in your storm. Look for peace in your heart. Because when we look for peace in our storm, the peace is moving. Because our situation and our circumstances move. But Jesus said, peace, be still. And you know what? I would much rather have a settled peace in my heart, no matter the situation, knowing that the safest place I can be is in the will of God than anywhere else. I remember a time when I was in Hungry Hollow and we lived in a mobile home that we hadn't tied down yet. There's a creek that was raging behind us and a tornado came through and flipped over a trailer down below us. Man, I tried to open the door. There's so much pressure I couldn't. I happened to try to look out the window. There's just sheets of rain and I saw this most eerie thing I've ever seen in my life was a leaf that was turning this way and it slowed down, it stopped and it started going the other way and I felt the trailer rocking. <clears throat> you know where I was? I was in the will of God. And that's the safest place that I could have been. My children were little. My wife was younger. And uh, she's as pretty today as she ever has been. But man, looking back on it, safest place I could have been was in the will of God. Because you know what's going to happen one day? If you outlive me, you're going to receive notice that that nut has taken his last breath and his heart has beat for the last time. Some are going to rejoice. But I will be in the will of God and I'll be safe. And Jesus said, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 40, and he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? Why did he say, why are ye so fearful? He goes on and says, how is it that you have no faith? But at what circumstance did he say, why are you so fearful? He acknowledged their fear. What were they fearful over? 
They were fearful over the storm, weren't they? The possibility of death. Yep. Look at this. It says in verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? We acknowledge that they were fearful of the storm and the impending doom that seemed to be coming upon them. But then the Bible says that after Jesus rebuked them and said, how is it that you have no faith? It says in verse 41, Brother David, that, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let me ask you a question. Which one did they fear when it was all said and done the most? Did they fear the storm or did they fear Jesus? They fear Jesus. See, the problem with you and I sometimes is that, 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 that when we are in the midst of the storm, we forget the word of God because, see, they forgot the word of God. They forgot that Jesus Christ, the word of God, said, let us go over onto the other side. And if Jesus is with you, he will never leave you nor forsake you, but be with you always, even onto the ends of the world, glory to God. And if that be the case, then glory to God, you're in the will of God, and that means that you are in the safest place that you could ever be. So glory to God, don't fear. Hallelujah. No matter what the circumstance is. And they feared exceedingly. See, before they feared. Before they, Jesus, Jesus, wake up, wake up. Do you not care that we perish? And now they, whoa, what manner of man is this that can speak to the wind and the seas obey him? Here's the problem. Sometimes we fear COVID. Sometimes we fear cancer. Sometimes we fear things of the world more than we fear God. No telling what 2022 has in store for us. But I don't care what happens. I don't care. The safest place we can be is in the will of God. That's the safest place. Outside of the will of God? Uh-uh. No. No. I would not want to live a blink of an eye outside of the will of God. Because in the blink of an eye, my life could be taken. And I'd lift my eyes in a lake of fire. And if somebody's here tonight and they don't know Jesus, I want you to understand with all the love that I've got that you are out of the will of God because it is not God's will that you perish but that you, that all should come to repentance. And if you miss heaven, you do so against the will of God. And God has done what he had to do. Now it's up to you. Ask if they would to come and sing a song, get an invitation. Ask you to stand if you're able to do so. Every head bowed and eyes closed just for a moment. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, knowing that if you were to die lost in your condition right now, you would lift your eyes in hell. How many of you tonight could lift your hand and say, Preacher, please remember me when you pray. I don't want to die lost. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be bought by the blood of Jesus. I want to be able to answer the call when he calls me. If this is you tonight, could you just lift your hand and take it right back down, right where you are, right where you are. Preacher, I need to be saved. Would there be any? 
Would there be any? Would there be any? Come on. Anybody at all? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody at all? As I move on to the Christian, if you're here lost, you ponder these things. If you need to come to the altar, then you come. Somebody will pray with you. Christian, every head bowed and eyes closed. If you're here tonight and you you feel in your heart and you know that you have feared things of the world and storms of life more than fearing God and trusting Him. Could you just lift your hand up and take it right back down? God bless that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? God knows all about it. God bless that hand. Would there be somebody else tonight? Could lift your hand and say, Preacher, when a storm comes my way, I get tore all to pieces. And I need the peace of God. And I need it to be still and settle down on me. Could you lift your hand and by that be saying, Remember me when you pray. God bless that hand, that hand. Others. God bless that hand. Others. God bless that hand. Others. 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 Amen. All right, you can look up. If you're here tonight, you lifted your hand or you didn't lift your hand. If you need to come and pray, why don't you step out and come? Come on. We often forget the Word of God when we become engrossed with the storm that we're in. Come on. Step out and come. There's peace in the Word of God. Comfort. But if you're here tonight and you need to come and pray, why don't you come right now? Come on. Come on. God bless you, brother. Anybody else? Anybody else need to come? Why don't you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now. Right now. Peace be still in my life. Peace. Peace. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. How about it? Anybody else need to come? Maybe you feared this COVID, cancer, sickness, death, illness, things going on in the world. Man, it's crazy. I'm telling you, this world is so out of control. Never seen a time in my life like we're living in now. But I know, even though the world is out of control, God is still in control. And the safest place I can be is in the will of God. Anybody else need to come as I turn it over Brother Rob? Come on, brother. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. I love you. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. You may ask yourself, where is the will of God? Right there. Lift that up. That's right where you'll find it. In His Word. In His Word. You'll find it right there. That's where you live. That's where you breathe. That's where you go. The Word of God. God didn't leave us without directions. <laughs> he never does. That's why He said He sent the Comforter. That He'll teach you. Lead you, guide you, and direct you in the perfect will of God. Amen? He will. Thank the Lord. All right, beautiful. Thank the Lord for the message, you know, just what God is doing in a mighty way. Amen? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, did he? He did what? Okay, yeah, it's Harley's father-in-law, matter of fact. Yes, it is. It's Jill's mommy, daddy. His her daddy, daddy. He is. Amen. I remember Herb Hyde also. Amen. A lot of stuff going on. Like Ray said, this world is a mess, man. It is. It's just crazy. 